What's up, guys? It's Evan Santapani. We're here in New Haven, Connecticut at the Montanari Brothers Powerhouse Gym. We're just inside now, five weeks out from the Arnold. It's Tuesday, shoulder day, shoulders and arms, actually. So, as you can see in the workout, we uh, we'll start with shoulder presses. Now, first thing you notice is we're doing them standing as opposed to seated. And anyone who's ever done them standing instead of seated um, knows that it's significantly more difficult to, you know, you could, you're more likely to use more weight seated. You know, you're stabilized, takes your back out of it. Um, should be able to move significantly more weight. So why do them standing? Well, um, this is one of the movements that I, I, I feel is really valuable. Um, something that Oscar and I did a lot in our prep for New York. And, you know, he, he said it in a way that made perfect sense. He said, well, you know, we're not necessarily trying to just isolate the shoulders so much as induce an effect on your entire body. Um, you know, doing a standing, you're going to involve your, a good deal of your posterior chain. Um, and aside from that, doing movements like this where you're standing, free weight, um, involving more muscles, you're going to burn significantly more calories, which makes it a valuable tool in pre-contest prep um, for getting in shape. You know, cardio is great. But doing things like this, I feel, during training, where you're on your feet, you're using free weights, um, things that are significantly more challenging that involve more muscles, I feel will help you to get in shape much more efficiently than if you simply rely on cardio and easier training. So, you know, whereas maybe if I were seated, maybe I'd be using you know, th upwards of three plates, you can see here, I don't get above two. And, you know, that, that for me feels, feels pretty heavy. Um, but it also, I feel like it gives, a, it gives you a great feeling in the shoulders as opposed to seated. Um, for whatever reason, I get a, a great, even though I'm involving a lot more muscle groups, um, I get a more intense feeling in the shoulders themselves. So whatever, I don't ask too many questions. I just roll with it. Um, As a variation of this, um, I've done it before where you know, maybe we put a plate on or a plate and a quarter and do 10 sets of 10. Higher volume, maybe only a minute in between sets. And you'd be amazed. I mean, really blows your shoulders out. And I actually feel like it's, it's actually helped to put a little bit of size on my shoulders. Then again... I don't know if it's, if it's fair for me to say because, you know, following the Olympia and, and most of the time following some shows, I try to scale back on my training for a bit and not spend as much time in the gym. And uh, the two things that I usually cut are arm and shoulder training because for me they're a little bit, they have a tendency to be more dominant. So I feel that those are two things that I um, won't kill me to, to leave out and not, not put as much time into. But when it comes time to prep for the show, I'm on them and I'm, I'm hammering them. And uh, so maybe, maybe the added growth I see is maybe just um, putting back something that was possibly lost. But it's worth trying. After the standing barbell press, we move on to um, machine side laterals. Um, you know, pretty much could accomplish a similar thing with, with using dumbbells. Uh, you get a really nice squeeze using uh, using the machine and seeing as it's it is more of an isolation movement anyways. Um, just today, I decided to use the machine. Last week, it was dumbbells. So, um, and again, it was a great great feel. Um, so it allows me to uh, have a really strong mind muscle connection. Whereas sometimes with the dumbbells, you have a tendency to get a little bit preoccupied with trying to, you know, sling the weight up. Um, after dumbbell side, or uh, excuse me, after the uh, machine side laterals, moved on to upright rows. Upright rows, I think, are is just a great movement. Period. Um, it's a really different, a really different, different movement from you know 
all the different lateral movements you're going to do for your shoulders and the pressing movements. It's, uh, it's really unique in the way that it helps to hit the shoulders. And plus, it does help to bring the traps into play a little bit. And again, it's one of those movements where you know, you're doing it standing, you're, you're involving a lot of different muscles, and it's, I feel like it's one of those movements that helps to uh, you know, bring, out, bring out condition. It's, it's, a good, it's a good calorie burner. Um, after this, we just go on and we finish with some rear delts. Uh, it, it was enough to, to pretty much you know, toast, toast my shoulders. And uh, by the time we got to rear delts, they were pretty beat up. And uh, you're going to notice we do, uh, we do some dips. Uh, we did them actually twice during the workout. <clears throat> we, we do them at the end of shoulders to kind of make, make for the transition from uh, shoulder training into some tricep training. And then we went back and we did them uh, again at the end of, uh, at the end of arm training just, uh, just to tie everything in again. But dips, dips I think, are probably if I could only, if I could only do, if I could only do one upper body movement, and it was something that I couldn't use weights. It had to be something, you know, either push-ups or dips or pull-ups. Um, I think you probably get the most bang for your buck with dips, you know, because you, you hit, your, hit your arms a lot. You got your shoulders in there. You got the chest. Um, and because you, 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 you're suspending your entire body weight, um, you're able to take, place, the, put the most amount of, uh, of load on those muscle groups. Although I guess you could say, you know, with, with pull-ups, you're, you're doing the same because you can, you know, suspend your body. Push-ups, you're not really able to do that, um, you know, because you got, you got your feet on the ground. Um, when we move on to arm training, we started with, you know, rope extensions. And uh, it's just, I don't, I, don't really, I don't really like starting with a movement like skull crushers. Probably back, you know, five, six years ago, I would just go right into that. Um, now... I, f I feel like I need to be a little bit more careful around my elbows and uh, get things get things a little bit more warmed up. And uh, the ropes are a good a good way to do that. Get get a lot of blood in there. As you can see, we do just a traditional type of you know uh, push down slash rope extension, and then uh, we switch to a couple sets of doing them uh, overhead. Both, uh, I feel that doing them the conventional way, you know, pushing them down, you're going to hit more of the outside part of the tricep. And then when I, when I switch and I do them overhead, uh, I, I usually feel it more on that, that inner head. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. That's just how I feel. <laughs> um, after we get them warmed up, come over, we hit the dumbbells for a couple, set, a couple sets of uh, behind-the-head dumbbell extensions. This, uh, this is a, a movement I've done since the beginning. I feel like it's really effective. You get a real nice stretch in the tricep. Although I will say, at times, it's, it's felt a little bit scary. And uh, you hear a lot of stories about guys tearing a tricep. And a lot of times, this is one of the movements that, that uh, seems notorious for, for doing that. So I will say, be careful. Make sure you warm up first. And if it doesn't feel right, you know, maybe you want to skip it. But it's always felt pretty natural to me. And, uh, again, I feel like this movement, I feel it more in the meat, the meat of my tricep, more in the, on, the, on that, that inner head. Um, so after a couple sets, a couple sets with these, I moved on to uh, just a, another kind of overhead rope extension. Just a, it's almost like doing skull crushers with a, uh, with a cable. Um, same thing, good, good, good feel in the muscle. All right, now I know the reason why I couldn't think of the next tricep movements because there wasn't another one. Uh, after, after we finished up triceps, we moved into, uh, we went and grabbed some dumbbells and did some preacher curls for biceps. Um, by this time in the workout, the workout was getting a little bit long and I felt like you know, probably two, two bicep move, movements would be sufficient. So probably the two that I felt get, would give me the most bang for my buck were the uh, dumbbell preacher curls. We did a few sets of these. Um, this is a great movement where if you have, um, if you have somebody that you train with, you know, they can kind of push you through the remaining couple reps. And if you don't, if you're on your own, you can always kind of just reach down with your hand and uh, give yourself some assistance. <laughs> um, 
and after these, we, uh, we moved on to just the regular old barbell bicep curls. Um, probably still, you know, with the exception of maybe the dumbbell curl, I'd say it's probably between the dumbbell curl and the, the barbell curl for just, you know, being the, the meat and potatoes bicep movement. And uh, my buys were pretty smoked by this point. And we, you know, as you can see, we didn't go above a, a quarter on the bar. Tried to keep the, uh, the rest in between sets at this point down to a minimum. And, uh, you know, as soon as Mark would go, probably, you know, give it a moment and then I would go. And uh, at this point, we're just finishing it off. And uh, that's really all it took. Um, we, what we do is we'll switch between training biceps first and triceps first. And I would say probably whichever muscle goes first is probably going to get a little bit more attention. So on the weeks where we train biceps first, they'll probably get, you know, maybe, uh, maybe three movements, probably some type of isolation movement, a, probably a barbell curl and, uh, some type of dumbbell movement, whether it's just a standing dumbbell curl, um, you know, just something basic. But I don't, um, biceps aren't something I spend a ton of time on, or arms in general, because I feel like they get a lot of stimulation. I feel like your, your triceps get a lot of stimulation when you, during your pressing movements, not only on shoulders, but on chest training. And then biceps, um, you know, no matter how good you are at training your back, you're still going to involve them, when, you know, with heavy back training. Um, so that being said, I don't think, or at least only, only speaking for myself, I don't feel like they need to be annihilated. Um, same thing with shoulders. I don't feel like you need to spend an hour just training your shoulders because they're going to receive a lot of, a lot of stimulus uh, during the rest of the week.